the Lord teach me how to stay in the spirit, the spirit regulates the lower. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says use the spirit to end all the prompting. Your, your, older, your lower nature have a lot of prompting. Mm. I want to be feed. I want to be loved. I want to be scratched. I want to live. I want to... How about me? Yeah, oh, yeah. Use the spirit. Be preoccupied with the spirit. You, to be truthful, you know, I don't think about it much, but sometimes I do wonder, really. I try not to go there. The spirit stops me. I wonder if it's operating and I just don't know. Or is it not operating? I'm, to be truthful, I'm not sure. Because... You I'm to not the sure. Of the Holy Spirit, you're hearing. It, it it's could, not it, crowded. It could be in a state of decay. Yep. Or it could be dead. You don't really know because you're not there. Correct. It's like, it's like you said, you're in the, the other room. So I don't know what's happening in the other room. And I don't really care. Yeah, the, yeah. The problem, I don't because, care. I just thank God. Yeah, because the goal is extinction. <laughs> the goal is not to lessen. So if I was to ask you and say, if you are to go, Bishop, well, is it happening? I don't know. And I don't, I don't explore it to find out. I don't want to. But you know, the enemy always knows that that's your strength and he's always in the background trying to break it down. Yeah. Break it down. His job is to pull you yes. back where you used to play. Yeah. Your job is always not to. Always work that way. One of the best ways to deal with, with, and I love God technique. God don't let you go fighting with the with whole nature. You're trying to come up, you're trying to push it down. He goes, no. He goes, let's refocus you. I'm going to put your mind in a different place. And this, the lack of use in this area will naturally what? Re remove it. Anything doesn't get used, get what? Just dissipate. You go and makes it so strong, you're using it what? All the time. So God does shift. He, he still goes, you're still going to do it. It's going to change what you do and where you do it. And in this new doing, it will eradicate the other one. In the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Verse 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now let me ask you this. There are those who have the Spirit but not been led, and there are those who have the Spirit and are being led. Now, if the one who is not being led, is he a child of God? One, two, three, generate. Yes. But God said, Those who are being led, they are my sons. The Bible speaks of children of God and sons of God. The sons, their their soul are being dictated to by their. Spirit of God. The children, unfortunately, they have been dictated by what? Flesh. Their flesh. But they're still, they're still safe. They're still safe. God is still trying to get them on the other side. Amen? Amen. Verse 15 says, For the spirit which you have now received, Amen, is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in the bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship. In the bliss of which we cry, Abba. 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 That spirit. Amen. Actual, actualize and bring to your consciousness that you are a son of God. And make you cry out, Father, Father. Verse 16 said, The spirit himself does testify together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are the children of God. Nobody needs to tell you you will know. What brings a lot of guessing is because you're in the wrong nature. You can't get this, this testifying effect that should be taking place. You're not experiencing. I want to share one more quick. Um, it's along the same line of the same process with you. Amen. To teach you, you have to, one of your pray, if you want to make progress in your spirituality, you have to pray this basic prayer. Lord, help me to stay in the spirit or in the nature that you have regenerated or placed me in. Help me to be conscious of that area. Mm -hmm. Help me, and that's sometimes, all the time. Or help me to stay, if you want to pray this way, help me to stay away from my sinful nature and stay into the spiritual nature. And then from there, you will have what the Bible calls revelation or discovery. God will show you how to discover or how to become familiar with the laws, the constantness of this new nature. And take it from one who can testify. As a result, you'll notice the things you used to do in the old nature will naturally stop. You won't have to try. If you don't do this, I'm telling you, as the Bible said, you're going to practice a lot of austerity. If you providing you want to change. There's so many people are constantly trying to stop that sinful nature. 
They have austerities upon austerities. So much discipline they're trying to apply. But there's only one problem. It's the will versus the natural flow. That battle is always lost. <laughs> you might slow him down for a month, maybe a couple of weeks. I'm not going to feed you. I know you're always hungry. You ain't getting no food for today. Let's see how that lasts. Yep. <coughs> Let me know how your austerities hold out. Yeah, you're gonna have a cheap day, <laughs> and then a cheap week, and then a cheap year. <laughs> Let me know how you how you yeah. fear with that. Yeah. That don't typically last, and that that's not freedom. You have no freedom. You're constantly engaged. Yeah. Perfect. You're constantly you're free when you don't have to deal with him. Perfect. If you constantly have to deal with him, there's no what freedom. Just walking in your strength and yep. the strength of the Lord. Exactly. You're constantly using your strength. And he wears you out. The Bible said, God laws. The heavenly law was put in place by the angel. You know what the scripture said? We read it. The Bible said the flesh weakened the law. So it was a, it, that wasn't a law from below. But the flesh was fighting so constant. The Bible said it weakened the law. So, the constantness of the flesh, he didn't say it defeated, but it made it seem like if the law is not working. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, 21 to 24. See, but I don't know if you knew, but Romans 8, you said 1 to 9, we stopped at 7. Yeah, I didn't go on this. Okay, yeah, we read like a lot of time. Yeah, and, last time we, we stopped at 16, we didn't go to 17 on Romans 8, too. Okay, let me you one said, over. Yes. You said 12 to 17. So I stopped one hurry, you're right. Yes. I don't know if you yeah. want to go back. Nine, I won't go back to it. No, yeah, because no we did that it's, last It's time. like repetition. Amen, yes. But I will do the one. Thank you, my brother. No problem. In Jesus' name. We, we got to get every drop. <laughs> Amen. You're a man. You don't let much escape. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm minding the things of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to lose the food. <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I, these are some natural practices I have. I'm either reading or listening to the Bible or, or you know, I'm... Me and my wife, we, um, we subscribe to a, a Christian channel um, called, um, what is it? it? Well, Sirius is it, a, it's Sirius a satellite effort. radio. Satellite radio, it's called... Um, the Message. The Message. Yes. And every time I renew my subscription, they're always telling me, they go, well, what do you listen to? There's so much more. I go, oh, only one channel. I, go, I, I don't know nothing about the rest. I go, I only listen to Christian music <laughs> nonstop. There is nothing else. But there's so much work, I said, not interested. <laughs> she goes, you, you mean there's such a big package and you listen to what? One. I know one channel. Satellite 63. <laughs> it play Christian music all day. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. I do not allow my mind to. We are either listening to the Bible or we are listening to fellowship. There's nothing else he needs. Anything else you start to mind, other things. Craziness comes up in my dream. Richard, don't you get bored? No, 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 don't get bored. Don't get bored. <coughs> don't get bored. Amen. Smile and I continue. No way. She's for every, every year they're trying to convince me that I should explore my horizon. But no, no. Verse 17 says of Romans 8, And if we are his children, and we are his ears also, ears of God and fellow ears with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share in his glory. As Christ had to stay away from the sinful nature to be the Son of God and to do the things only the Son of God can do, we must also share in the suffering, stay away from the... Believe me, the sinful nature is a lot of fun. Death, death fun, meaning the things that come with death, you can drink and smoke and cuss and carry on. It's all leading to death. But you must know through the Spirit of God, the Bible said, put to death. Do not participate in the things of death. But do everything there is to keep releasing the Spirit of what? Life. Walk in it, live in it, think about it, speak it. It should flow from every component what? Of you. Amen? Now when the Father look at you, there should be no stain. No blemish. Meaning, nothing in your life. You can have something good. But if you ever eaten a fruit and a certain part is have a little bit of rot in it, the Bible said no, no stain. In your perfect life or white state, there must be what? No stain. There must be no blemish. No part of you, life must be what? Ineffective or defective. 
No stain, no blemish. Because you want to be risen from that bed. Amen. There must be no stain, no blemish. But anything or any, any place anyone comes in contact, they should experience life and life to what? The fullness. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to stay away from the dead. But the Bible says you're calling to the glory, so you've got to participate in the suffering. Mm -hmm. There's something those who walk in death do, you cannot do. When you believe, you have decided to move away from it. Ephesians chapter 4, 21 to 24. Then we're going to st st stay our hand there, if the Lord allows it. Where is it? Ephesians chapter 4, 21 to 24. Actually, let's read it from 20. Actually, I'm pushing it back even further. 19 to 24. I just wanted to see what, what makes us get into this trouble. Ephesians chapter 4, 19 to 24. And we will stop and end understanding the nature and the mind. Remember that a mind makes determination, decision. A decision needs to be supported by flow or fluidity. Amen? Or momentum. A decision without flow or momentum, it's extremely hard. Are we there? The Bible said in verse 19, in their spiritual apathy, they have become callous. Spiritual apathy is like they're sluggish. They're not, they're not, they're not very um, uh, agile. Amen? And they have become callous and path-feeling and reckless. And have abandoned themselves a prey to, amen, to unbridled sensuality, eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity that their depraved desire may suggest and demand. So they, they have moved themselves out of the spiritual flow and allow the sinful suggestion of the sinful nature to suggest to the mind. And in that state, your spirit will become more and more sluggish. You will find you still have to deal with people, things, and situations, but you never have the power to do it because you have neutralized your spirit. If you want your spirit to be strong, you have to let your consciousness work in conjunction with it, not sometime, all the time. So the more, but put it this, the more you exercise the spirit, the stronger it, it, it becomes. And you cannot exercise it if you don't become familiar with it. The more familiar you become with something, the more use you can get what? From it. Do you understand this process? There are many people, sometimes they have something, a um, perfect example in this end. I do not know my cell phone good enough. I believe I use my cell phone to a fraction. Mm -hmm. There are people who can do, use my cell phone for amazing thing because they become fully what? Aware of it. My sons always tell me this, if I have to think of that, you know if you just keep playing with the phone, you'll figure it out. It's true. It's the same method I use for everything. Anything I keep playing with long enough, I, I eventually what? Gain its nuance. I'll figure it out. It revealed itself to me. But you have to spend enough time on. But because I only use a cell phone for the basic things that I need, but I use my spirit for everything I need, all my time is energy is spent what? Exploring the spirit. I've been doing this for a very long time, and I still don't feel I have maybe more than maybe 20 or 30 percent of the spirit in my awareness. I still believe, I don't know, only God can quantify what that number is. I still believe maybe 70 to 80% of my spirit operates outside of my consciousness. And I'm a serious player. I don't feel, and now I can tell some of it, based on what the Lord, the Lord Jesus, you know what the Lord Jesus said about us? You know what's expected of us? To do greater things in heaven. He said, based on the amount of time and opportunities that we have, we are going to do greater things than? Yeah. How many of you feel you're doing greater things than Jesus? No. Not, not even. How, how many of you feel you're doing 20% what Jesus did? <laughs> <laughs> now you know why I said I think I only get 20 or maybe 30% of my spirit. Right. I still don't believe we fully comprehend what we have become. No, I don't think so. Not even close. And I consider myself a serious player because I don't play much, if any, with the sinful nature. And I still don't feel comfortable enough in the spirit navigation. 
Verse 20 says, But you did not so learn from Christ. You did not learn from Christ to walk in a spiritual state of apathy and to be reckless and to abandon your spiritual regenerated state. Christ does not teach you that. In fact, you go out. Engage it. You can set your mind and heart to it. Set your, your heart on it. It's like you must be convicted and have a desire and a heart. I will. Paul, you say I love Paul. Paul is one of my favorite brothers. Paul, Paul God, I'm not saying I got it yet. But I'm telling you, I have a heart for it. I am committed to figuring it out. Like Paul, I'm extremely committed to figure out what, what this regenerated spirit and the Holy Spirit can do or die trying. It is my one aspiration. I don't want to die not releasing it or figuring out what it can do. Or rob my brothers and sisters from getting what they needed. Or rob my God who regenerate me from being glorified simply because I have spiritual apathy. I do not have the desire to go get it. Lord, please don't let it be sore. Take me home. May you always keep passion in us to explore and to find what this spirit can really do. And by the way, God glory, God said my glory is achieved through that. You, you figure that out. And your fellow man desperately what? Needed. Christ said, look at the, some of us have brothers and sisters and families and friends and community that has been harassed. Who do you think fixes it? You, when you figure it out. The Bible said Christ didn't teach us to let that state to abandon herself and to get into all form of impurity. Assuming that you have really heard him and been taught by him, as all truth is in Jesus, embodying, personified, amen, personified in him. It said, what you need to do, strip yourself of your former nature. Get rid of it. God has already do it. Now pick up the cross. Put off and disregard your old unrenewed self. Which character? It said you'll know it. It has some characteristics. Which characterize your, amen, your previous manner of life. And become corrupt through lust and desire that spring from disillusion. Your old nature is corrupt because you're always in a disillusion state. Your old nature lives from a state where it can't figure out things. When we were kids, we used to play this game. We call it I turn. You turn yourself and turn yourself around. And then you try to go far. But then you're too out. <laughs> that your old nature is like that. There is so much desire, it's in a state of what? Disillusion. It's always believed this will be what? Good for me. This will be really good. People will like me more if I get this clothes or this house or this. It's always pursuing something That's not right. to make it at the end of the day. Exactly. That will make me live longer, secure my life better, make me happier. But it comes out of disillusion. It's unrighteous, as my sister said. It is absolutely unrighteous. But it's always after it. The Bible said, get rid of that nature. It, it always desires the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not giving me life everlasting. No. <laughs> no. It, 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 it don't even maintain the very life, even to secure you or to keep you, it sabotages the very <laughs> life. It destroys the planet. It <laughs> destroys relationship. It destroys friendship. It destroys health. It's a... It, it's Satan of almost a perfect yes. weapon in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, super, a, it's, a, it's a mini destroyer. <laughs> it's a mini destroyer. The only thing stops it is limiting in power. Yeah. If it had full power, it would long bring an end to us. Yeah. Madame Guyane calls it her torturer. <laughs> she called it the creature. <laughs> the creature is full of destruction. It's a and be constantly renew. In the spirit of your mind. Let your mind be renewed through the spirit. It's a constantly, amen, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Your whole mind must shift from being like Peter. And you must have a fresh way of seeing God and seeing yourself and seeing people and living in the world. And believing and thinking and interplaying. Have a fresh revelatory way of looking and being in life according to the regenerated spirit and the Holy Spirit of God. The reason you should be reading the Bible and fellowshipping, amen, and praying and communing is to have a fresh way of being. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 24 said, 
and put on the new nature. Which one you should be living in? The new, the new nature. Mm -hmm. The regenerated self created in God's image. Mm -hmm. It's God-like in true righteousness and holiness. Mm -hmm. If you're going to live, please live in the, old, the new nature. If you're going to live, live in the godly nature. You cannot be godly walking in the whole unrenewed. This is what the Pharisees do it. They're talking about God, but they're living in what? The old nature. This is what Paul figured out in Romans 7. He goes, I can read the Bible with my mouth. We can fellowship. But soon as I start to act, I'm like, what is going on? The old nature breaks forth. The cross is to strip you of that old life. This is why Christ said, you must lose that life to find your life. If you are not discovering your spiritual life, there is one reason. You haven't lost the whole life. You, you, you might hear about it, but you don't experience it. You need to ask the Lord, Lord, let the cross manifest in my life that I cannot experience the whole life. And I promise you, you'll find a new life. It's just confession to God. I promise you, you will start. Then all you have to do now to use the new life is become one. Familiar. Mm -hmm. Renew your mind with a fresh way of believing and thinking. Your prayer will change and your life will change. And your behavior will change and your interplay, your outlook, everything change. I'm not saying, you, you might not have a Paul moment right like that. But gradually, you may, the Bible said, grow in grace, gradually in the knowledge of the Son of God. You will begin to get what? Enlightened. You'll become more spiritual upon spiritual upon spiritual. And very soon you'll be led by the Spirit of God as a son of God. Do you understand? But you must stay away. The mistake some of us make, one of the reasons that brought this message into manifestation. We go, okay, I've changed my mind. I have an agreement with God now. But God didn't just give you a new mind. And in fact, the new mind is forged by the new nature properly. You can't keep the old nature and just become spiritualized in your mind. Christ said, you do not put new wine in what? Old wine skin. The new mind must be in the new nature as the old mind was in what? The old nature. You see? So as your mind is renewed, it must work in conjunction and be renewed even by Amen? The Word of God and the new nature. And when you do this, you will be effective in what you do and in your spiritual life and your daily. And here's the best part. You will find a lot of the things you're desiring that you're trying to get God to bless you, the blessings start to chase you down. When you are operating, you know God intended for you to operate. He brings all the providence and provision for you to live that life effectively. Without it, you're constantly trying to pull something from him, and he's constantly trying to fix you. So there's this weird interplay taking place. There's a weird interplay. You know, we sing a song of it this morning, um, but there's a part go, you know, I'm right with my God. Oh, there's God, Mama, you remember something? I'm all right. But, I am right with my God. For all time, God, Jesus, my Savior. When you're in the new nature and, and the mind is reformed, you are right with your God. If not, on, on a salvation side, you're still right with God because you believe. But operation, you're not. He's constantly going, you're not operating properly. You see? As you become familiar with the new nature, you'll find that old nature just disappear. You know, I, I am fortunate by God's grace and His mercy for such a wretched creature like me. Many of my wayward habits, I never tried to break them. But as God let me engage and be, discover the spirit, I find they just fall away. I believe it's the best technique. In our quenching the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's the best technique. Replacement or reestablishment. Amen? The new nature is reestablished and it replaces all of the old traits of the other one and so forth. In Jesus' name. We're going to take up tithing and then we'll do communion. As usual, we want to thank all of you who follow us on YouTube and the internet. We thank God for your life and you spending this morning with us at this time of your life. You live a busy life. But we appreciate your life and we appreciate you taking the time and the energy to spend some time in the presence of the Lord. And for doing this, I'm trusting the Lord to bless you and to keep you and to watch over you. 
Father, if you are already in the Lord, I'm trusting the Lord will move upon you, that you will identify the new nature and have a fresh, constant being renewed. Amen? Readiness and, and tra transformation in your mind and in your attitudes. How to walk and live before the Lord and with your fellow man. And anyone who is not in this state, the time has come to leave that sinful state that is just bringing all that God does not intend for you to have in your life. You're not getting the blessing and the favor and the grace that so God so want to give to you and send this son to atone for you. I want to regenerate you and for you to enjoy, you know, life and life to the fullest. So it's time to come to him and we want to join whatsoever little faith you have or whatsoever faith you have. We want to join our faith with your faith. You know, by welcoming you into the kingdom of God. And right now, wherever you are, if you believe and confess that Jesus is the Son of God, the authorized Son that can atone and give life. Amen. And God raised him from the dead, the first to be raised, amen, from the sinful nature. Even though he took on all the sins of the world. And he's the Lord, the owner, Adonai, of you and everything else. Amen. The Messiah and Savior. He's the Lord and the Christ. Amen then you shall be saved and saved to the utmost. And the Lord shall give you life and teach you to set your heart and mind amen, into the new nature and become familiar that you can live a life of excellence and effectiveness, a testimony to the Lord, beneficial to your family and your fellow man, your community and your land. In the name of Jesus, we thank God for your life and consider you saved and saved to the utmost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.